Welcome to another edition of Play Branson, where you get to know Branson's entertainers better. My name is Chris Meyer, and I'm here today with my co-host, Haley Westrich. Haley, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing awesome. So Good. We, you said right before we came on, we should give a shout out. Yeah. Who, who should we give a shout out pastor to? Pastor Jeremy Thomas, new lead pastor at First Baptist Branson. Yeah, so Super I know a lot, of, a lot of people in the community are happy that he is now the lead pastor. Yes. And so, Jeremy, if you're watching, thumbs up. You're going to do a good job. Okay. Um, we need to talk about magic. We do. Why do we need to talk about magic? Because we've got an amazing illusionist that we're going to go here in a little bit on site with. His name's Reza. So and we're so super excited. We're going to talk to Reza. And yeah. I, I'm wondering if that's his real name or like he just made it, it up or stage name. But I guess name. we'll find I out. Know. Yeah. I don't know. Keep watching. So let's talk about a few fun facts about magic. All right. Um, the term magician is fading away and now... It's preferred to call them illusionist. Yes. That's interesting. Um, Harry Houdini died on Halloween I in 1926. Know. Very famous magician. Yes. And the most expensive magic show was in Vegas at the Mirage Casino, apparently. $35.7 million to stage the show. I don't know wow. who that was, but that's what I this is. I know. That's crazy. So, and then Alexander Herman created the typical magical magic magician attire, wavy hair, top hat, goatee, and tailcoat. Hmm. I don't know that I've seen a lot of magicians Not quite like today, that anymore. No. But, um, you know, that's one of the things is, you know, Branson, you know, sometimes people think Branson's just country music. Right. But we have a lot of illusionists. Yeah. Here in Branson. We do. Uh, we have Reza. We have Rick Thomas. Taylor Reed. Taylor Reed. Mm -hmm. Hamner. Yes. So there's at least four. And then there may be, maybe there's some more that are parts of shows. But right. So great variety. Yeah. In Branson. Absolutely. So folks, stay tuned. We're going to run over to the theater and we'll be right back. There are so many things to do in Branson. You need help planning and booking all your fun. You need iBranson.com. You can find everything Branson has to offer from your computer, tablet, or cell phone. You can even buy tickets online or talk to one of their friendly Branson travel specialists. There's no sales pitches, no delivery fees, no service fees, and no waiting. It's fast and easy. Find your fun at iBranson.com. Do it all online or call 877-ENTERTAIN. That's 877-368-3782. iBranson.com. Hey, folks. Welcome back to Play Branson, where you get to know Branson. Branson's entertainers better. Today we are on location on Reza's uh, motor coach bus. And so, uh, Reza, it's good to have you here on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Um, and so, tell folks a little bit about you and your background. You've been in Branson here for a while, but how did, how did that all lead up? Yeah, I actually came to Branson as a kid. My parents would bring me here on vacation, which is cool. I'm originally from South Dakota. So this was the natural vacation spot to come to. And so every year we'd come to Branson and I would be sitting in the front row of the magic shows and being you know, very inspired to, to one day pursue it. And so it just made sense that um, you know, this was my goal to, to then bring my own show uh, and my dream to, to Branson. So that's what we've done. So how did you, how did you get started in magic? Because I think it was at a very young age that you got started. Yeah, I was, I was six and there was several different events that inspired me in magic, you know, watching uh, TV specials at that time. And uh, a magician came to my elementary school and did a show. And so all these little key moments kind of led up. And so we come on vacation, obviously I'd want to go see the magic show. So um, started with just, you know, a magic kit and a dream. And my parents were so cool. They, they saw that I was seriously interested. You know, it wasn't just a phase. And so they supported me. And my dad was in um, real estate, but back, you know, when, when he was younger, he booked bands. And so he, oh, okay. he helped me quite a bit to establish the business side of, of my career. My mom was just, you know, supportive like a mom would be. She saw that I was interested. So uh, all that played into it. Um, and Branson has just always been a really cool place that um, I love to spend time and now I get to call home. And so when did you do like kind of some of your first shows, like when you were performing for people? Yeah, the first shows were back in, in the Midwest, in the upper Midwest, um, a place called Okaboji, Iowa. There was a resort there. Mm -hmm. And I would go and I'd do little shows and, um, you know, charge like $5 a head. And I was probably 12 or 13 at the time. And so it was real, um, 
uh, a real entrepreneur move for me, not only to perform magic, but to figure out how to monetize it and how to build a brand. So later, you know, I started approaching it like a band would. I would go put posters up places, and I would go to the radio stations and pitch myself, and the newspapers and pitch myself. And so, you know, all that coming up, I, I think, was really valuable to me. Even some of the, the, the losses, as much as the wins, because I would learn from every step and you know eventually you know when we brought this to Branson other places in the world um, I had real world experience you know going into it so we could you know be successful so how many how many years total have you been performing magic now um, this is my 17th year uh, touring and taking it you know on a on a national and, and international uh, level Wow, that's a long time yeah it's it's been a journey um, you know where it started was um, was very basic. I didn't have a nice tour bus. I had a uh, a renovated <laughs> school bus. I knew that I wanted to travel, you know, in a way that I could pull big equipment with me and lights and sound stuff. And so that was a necessity. What are we going to have to pull all that? So I bought a, a school bus, painted the outside, you know, as like a tour bus as possible with the silver at the bottom, and the, you know. And then um, every year I just try and grow, you know, as a performer, and uh, that was. That's it. And so folks, I, you can't see all this bus, but let me tell you, this is an awesome bus. I call it a rock star bus because it is very, very cool. Uh, and so it's, uh, Reza gave us a little tour of it here a little bit ago. Very awesome. Um, and so do you, when you go on the road, do you go, do you take people, I guess, with you as well, right? Is that correct? Yep, I have my core crew. So my team, which includes um, one or two drivers, depending on the, uh, the amount of traveling we're doing. You know, uh, dancers, sound tech, lighting tech, stage manager, road manager, um, and so everyone has their own position that their expertise in that area allows us collectively to, to put the show um, up and down every single night. So we'll do 100 uh, tour dates every year, and then in addition to that, 100 in Branson. So this year we're doing 100 dates um, here, and then I might finish a show uh, one night and do the meet and greet and then get in the bus and then travel halfway across the country and do another show the next day and then travel back and then be back in Branson for a matinee show. So we're always moving. Okay. Um, so tell, tell people like your first year in Branson, where were you at and kind of how did that all happen? Well, my very, very first year in Branson, I came when I was 14 and I interned um, and I did some uh, opening acts in a show. And uh, that led to having a spot in a show and then eventually I had my own show after about a three year process. And that was at the Branson, uh, the mall okay. theater there. That I'm not even sure if it's still in existence today, but that was my first um, my first experience performing in Branson. And then some other doors started opening up, and I started touring um, other places. And then we went um, started doing international dates and television shows. And then over that period, I uh, I just toured mostly um, the same kind of places, performing arts centers and colleges and so forth. But it was other other areas. Mm -hmm. And then I would um, eventually set my sights back on Branson. I got a call to do a show called The Revolutionists, okay. which was a performance over at Music City Center. Mm -hmm. And it was a new concept in magic with five performers that each had their own specialty in magic, so to speak. A sleight of hand performer, a comedy performer, and then I was um, kind of the rock and roll, large scale illusion is kind of how they had me um, molded for my, my image in this show. And it was a really cool show. And it ran um, two seasons in Branson. And then when that contract ended, I got an offer to go to the Starlight Theater, which right. was a, a great step up, um, beautiful venue here in town. And uh, I performed my own show at that point. So we get to headline the Starlight Theater. And with the experience coming off the last two years in Branson, um, it was a great stepping point um, to then do that. And so that was like that was kind of like your first show where you're headlining, no other magicians um, uh, here in Branson. It was my second, because when I was, I think, 16 or 17, I had that show at the Branson okay. Mall. Um, but then after leaving and coming back, uh, being a part of the ensemble show, and then this was my first um, okay. reintroduction into Branson uh, as a headliner. And my show had changed so much at that point from when I was here previously that it really was like it was like the first time again, because it was a totally different product, um, yeah. you know, really. So that was cool, and um, we did a uh, fantastic season at the Starlight Theater, and then we went to North Carolina uh, the following summer for a residency there, and then uh, this opportunity opened up at the Branson Famous Theater, which uh, a larger stage, uh, a fly system, the capabilities 
to again step the show up one more time and bring an even larger show to Branson with even more production. And so we're really excited about now um, being back in Branson with you know a new performance. Yeah. And so you're you're really one of the youngest headlining entertainers in Branson, and you've really been able to make your dreams come true. So, would you, how old are you? Uh, I just turned 32. 32. So I'm. Um, uh, um, I'm on probably the, the end of the young spectrum, but I still try and you know embrace that youth and try yeah. and bring it on stage every night. Well, I mean, you look young, um, but you know to be you know really one of the youngest headliners in Branson is pretty awesome because I know there's always this big misconception out there that Branson is just country music and it's just for old people, and so number one we have more than country music and there's nothing wrong with country music, but uh, we have a young entertainer that's traveled the world in Branson and doing stuff in Branson, and so folks. We're going to come back in just a moment, and we're going to actually talk about the show, the location, all that kind of fun stuff, what you can expect from Ray's show. So we'll be back in just a moment. So hang tight. City street magician named Razor. I was attempting to estimate the minimum amount of time Razor's bullet was in his mouth. Last time. Catch. Hey, Razor. Hey, Razor. Turnover. Show to everyone. Hold it up. That is an amazing trick, and you Thank killed you us. Much. You just killed us. Beautiful. Razor. Great trick, Razor. Great trick, man. Oh my God. cliche items like rabbits out of hats and sparkly boxes, but instead use things like power tools and spray paint and just bring a really cutting edge feel to the magic. Folks, welcome back to Play Branson. Today, here we are with Reza here on his motor coach. And uh, Reza, tell people about your show. What can they expect when they come and see your show? It's like a rock concert meets a magic show. So we have a lot of production elements that we've integrated in the show with video walls and lighting and sound. This whole experience, uh, which takes the magic to a new level. But you know, also I want to create something for Branson that was unique and I, I recognize that Branson has a lot of shows that are very specialized or if you like a certain kind of music this is the show for you or if you don't this is the show for you because you like you know X and there wasn't really something that appealed to everybody all at once you know there's shows that um, have different sections of it that appeal to different people but from the start of our show to the very end I wanted to connect and appeal to every single age demographic every background you know and that's what we create and the energy that comes from that you know is just a really cool um, ambiance in in Branson to have uh, like 
like a concert, you know. Um, so it's it's that it's it's live magic uh, that connects with the crowd from large scale illusions. I make a helicopter appear, a motorcycle appear, uh, giant things levitate, um, go from one location to another in the blink of an eye, and then the next moment I'm doing close up magic and I'm I'm doing it right up close to the crowd using live projection and really making it feel like an intimate. Um, experience so it's uh, it's a really fun time yeah so do you do you I think I read somewhere where you've added new things to the show or you're going to is that accurate yeah we've had people come to the show um, over and over and over you know and say this is the seventh time we've seen you, the eighth time we've seen you and so you know because of that it fuels my my drive to continue building you know, new illusions and new experiences. And uh, so this season alone, we were, or actually this month alone, we put in four new illusions and we're constantly changing the show. So when people come see it, we're showing them something new every time. Yeah. So I'm guessing you have an assistant that is probably young and attractive, maybe? <laughs> the, the girls are fantastic. <laughs> uh, there's several girls and they're, um, they're extremely talented in what they do and what they bring to the show. Um, everyone, I have a very talented crew. I'm very lucky and blessed. Uh, to have such a talented team to help me. Yeah. And so, where where people where can people find the show at, and uh, what times and days? And yeah, I'm at the Branson Famous Theater, so we get to share the theater with the Ball Knobbers show, and uh, we perform uh, 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. depending on the day. And uh, our schedule is at rezalive.com, which is R-E-Z-A-L-I-V-E, -E, and you can check out other videos and other content for the show as well. So when you come to the show, you're uh, are warmed up. So, um, your name, is it a stage name, is it a real name, or you, will you tell us, because it's unique. It is, it's my real name. It's a question I get asked quite a bit. Uh, my mother is from uh, Tehran, Iran, and she, she grew up there and then she came to the U.S. Uh, when she was very young. And so that part of my background and culture is obviously very important. So they, my parents gave me that as my real first name, a Persian first name, and then they gave me a middle name that's uh, American. My dad was born and raised here in the Midwest, so I, I was given the opportunity basically uh, to, to choose either name. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to, you know, they said, you can go by your middle name. And it ended up just working out so perfectly because it was so unique that I didn't have to change my name, so it's my real name, I just stuck with it and, and it worked out. I couldn't probably do anything else and have that, you know, raise the plumber probably doesn't work out real well, but raise the magician, it, you know, instantly people uh, responded well to it and so it just stuck. So you said you're doing about 100 dates in Branson this year, and so do you, do you have an end date or do you kind of come and go throughout the whole year? Or we do, um, we're constantly touring. And so we have two days off a week um, during the summer, and the fall uh, is a little bit different. The fall we, we tour more than we're here. Okay. So it depends on the time, so it's always great to check the schedule and see. Uh, some Sometimes in the fall, for example, we only have one show a week and uh, we're touring the rest of the time, but um, collectively it's 100 shows, and our last show is the last week in December. Okay, so folks, if you are actually coming to Branson over Christmas break, potentially, check the schedule, because Reza could be here. Um, and once again, he is at the Branson Famous Theater, which is where the ball knobbers are. And if you haven't ever heard of the ball knobbers, that's one of the first shows in town. And just kind of a, from a reference standpoint, if you think of the Titanic Museum, take a left on 165, and it's about, uh, we'll say a half a mile uh, down 165 on the right-hand side. Big, beautiful theater, big stage. Um, and be sure, and I'm guessing, do you have a Facebook page and all that kind of fun yep. stuff as well? Um, yeah, I'm very active on social media, and all my social media goes directly to me, so I don't have anybody else running it. So if you send me a message, uh, I'm the one replying to you. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, uh, if you just type in Reza, R-E-Z-A, Illusionist, um, I'm easy to find. Yeah. Uh, so you've been on TV as well. So tell, talk, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I, I love doing TV shows. Um, this last season we were on um, Duck Dynasty on uh, A&E, uh, Penn Teller Foolis on The CW, uh, Elementary on CBS, and International as well. We just did uh, our third network TV special in Japan. So um, that was a really cool experience as well. Yeah, and how, how, do you, how does that all come about? How, do you, do you, do they, how does that happen? Um, I mean, a lot of the reality shows that we do are they are scripted, you know, and so there are 
people who are in charge of developing storylines. Um, but then once you start filming these shows, they be, they become off script, you know. But initially, there's there's ideas that become into play. And so, um, and one example for a reality show we just did on on uh, network TV, uh, the, the the writers out in LA um, approached us and said we love these uh, these specific tricks that you did. And one was the Oreo. I don't know if you've seen it. It was a trick that I did and went viral with uh, an Oreo cookie. And um, I eat the filling out and then take the uh, cookie and then bring the filling back. Oh, make wow. a double stuff. For whatever reason, it, it connected to them. And they said, we'd love to make an episode that kind of involves that idea. And the more that, that uh, we talk through that, the more other tricks became involved in the story and this plot that ended up being an episode devoted entirely to magic, uh, which was really cool because it's a uh, it was it's a huge iconic uh, you know TV show, and all of a sudden they're you know gravitating towards these tricks that I created and just kind of threw online, not thinking anything of it. Hmm. You know, I I designed these tricks with helicopters and these you know big things, and then to have somebody really get intrigued by the smallest you know yeah. most simplistic thing that I've created um, is, is weird, but I think it says something that magic. You know, like music and other art forms, it's about connecting and relating. And so, if there's a song that relates to someone's life, they're gonna like that song. And likewise, if you do something with something that people, you know, can relate to that object, um, it's gonna go places. And so that's what happened. And, and the TV shows started coming in, um, kind of one after another, because of the re relatable side of magic they started putting out there. Yeah. So, folks, here's the deal: if you are in Branson or you're you're coming to Branson, come check out. Raises magic show, um, and it's going to be more than just magic because he's got other folks in it, and uh, it's going to. You, you called it a combination of a rock concert and a magic show, right? It is, yeah. yeah I mean, that's 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 kind of intriguing, and so I think that's uh, something you'll want to check out um, from one of Branson's youngest headliner entertainers, who's toured the world, been on reality TV shows, um, and so it's at the Branson Famous Theater. And if you need tickets, you can always go to ibranson.com or call 877-ENTERTAIN, and we'll be back in just a moment. The Holiday Inn Express Green Mountain Drive. It's the perfect resort hotel for your next Branson stay. Check into one of our many room types. Then relax in the refreshing indoor pool and hot tub. Enjoy the free hot breakfast every day. For more information or to make reservations, call 800-321-7275. Hey folks, we're on location this afternoon at the Bumper Boats here at the Track Family Fun Parks. And it's like 100 degrees out. I'm wearing black, not real smart, but I would love to be on these right now. And I would love to have other people on them spraying me with water. And that's the fun thing is you can bump into each other. You can also spray other people. And you know, maybe, maybe your kid has been bad and you just need to get them back or something. So get them on this and then you could spray them like crazy with water. It's a lot of fun. Crystal clear water back here. And the other thing is if you're out here at the track, Family Fun Parks, they've got go-karts right behind me, we've got the Ferris wheel, we've got the heavy metal high-rise over here, a big three-story go-kart track, also bumper cars, bumper boats, boats, of course, so come out, you can make this a family fun afternoon or evening here on West Highway 76, this is located just across from Ripley's, believe it or not, and this is just another fun thing you can do on vacation here in Branson, Missouri. We're back in studio. Thanks for watching that last segment of Bumper Boats. Yes, I love Bumper Boats. They're so much fun. They are, and I tell you what is absolutely the funnest thing to do with Bumper Boats is you find the Bumper Boats of course where you can spray water and you just spray the tar out of someone you don't know. And it's okay <laughs> because it's on vacation. You're never gonna see those people again. And so just go spray them and soak them because here's the deal, they shouldn't be riding the Bumper Boats if they don't wanna get wet. That's true, Right? yes. And so. It's hot out, go ahead and do it and have fun with it. You'll, you'll love it. <laughs> um, okay, what are some other fun activities that people can do to stay cool in Branson? Well, we've got white water. Of course, we've got all those shows, which are all, most of them are inside. Then we've got the caves. The caves, that's right. So if you haven't been to Talking Rocks, 
uh, that's over past Branson West. Be sure to go and check Talking Rocks out um, over there. Uh, Bruce Hirschman is the owner, and they, I think they have a little mini golf uh, course in outside the cave, mm -hmm. but that would be cool. And then there's also some indoor mini golf courses here in Branson. Right. So we got a few of those, so yeah. you can stay cool that way. Or just go jump in the hotel swimming pool. <laughs> That's another way to be cool. You know, a lot of people, they also go eat cool desserts like That's ice true. cream. So you got Cold Stone, you've got Andes. That's another way yeah, to kind of get so the cool. A few shaved ice places here in town. There you go. So Yetis and yeah, lots of, lots of fun stuff. Okay, Yakov Shmirnov is coming back to town. July 6th and 7th, that's a, like next couple days, right when we, uh, yeah. after this airs. And so he's going to do a couple shows before his fall. So welcome back, Yakov. And if you haven't got your tickets, I think he's doing some special deals for folks for this special deal. And then our next show, tell people about it real We've quick. We've got the people from the Music Factory with us. So that's and a new show in town. So. That's a new show. And yeah. so we'll be interested to talk to those folks and learn more about the Music Factory. So Thanks for watching. Stay tuned and we'll be back next Thursday. Bye-bye. Try something different this vacation. Bring the whole family to Branson Segway. Segways are the most fun on two wheels since the bicycle. It's safe and fun. Ride at your own pace on our specially designed track. You can oh, do it. I don't know if I can do this, guys. On, I don't know. On, to get it. your family from ho-hum to adventure, ride a Segway. Branson Segway and Adventure Center on Highway 165, just one block south of Titanic. Come on, slow folks. Ride like.